Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to Global Life Church. Where the presence, the power, and the glory of the Lord is always felt. And on today, Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday morning, He's risen. He's not dead. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God. Many mourn Him during the week. But we know that He's a risen and a living Savior 24-7. Every day, we don't just only think about Him just last week and today. But every single day, He's the very breath that we breathe. And so we thank God that we're not necessarily caught up in all the hype, but we know that we serve a risen Savior, and He's alive in us. And because He lives, we also can live. Amen? And so for this morning's devotion, we're going to be looking at Matthew 28, when it is found, a loud amen, and we're going to begin to read. Matthew 28, and we're going to be reading from verses 1 to about verses... Uh, began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it his countenance was lightning and his raiment white as snow was dead shape and became as dead man. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here. Hallelujah. For he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. You and I, we are disciples, and we need to know that he's risen from the, from the dead. And it says, Behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. He is risen just as he said. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. And there's a song that goes, Because he lives, I can face all of my tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And I know that he holds my future just because he lives. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. He lives, he lives, he lives. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you are our risen Savior. We thank you, Father God, that you rose from the dead triumphantly, Father God. Death could not hold you back, Father God. But, Father God, you came forth victorious. And because you live, we have eternal life. Because you live, we can become salvaged. Father God, the word salvation means heal, whole, well in every area of your life. And, Father God, each of us who have salvation, Father God, is a total package. And, Father God, we thank you for health. We thank you, Father God, for wealth. We thank you, God, Father God, for right standing, Father God. You salvage us from out of the pit. And Father God, many of us were in different position, different situation, but nonetheless, we are saved. And Father God, we thank you for saving our souls and for making us whole. And it was because of your death and dying that we have these privileges. And so we thank you for your many benefits, Father God. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Father God, that you have been resurrected. And we thank you, Father God, you said that the same spirit that dwells in you dwells in us, Father God. And so we thank you that we have resurrected bodies also. And so, Father God, anything that seems to go wrong with our body, Father God, we can apply the blood of Jesus. And so we thank you for the blood of Jesus on today. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, that washes white as snow. Father God, we might have been as filthy rags, 
but you made us for white as snow. And so we thank you for this miracle, Father. And we thank you that we're going to continue to live, Father God, as your disciples, not only on Sunday, Father God, but Monday and throughout the rest of the week until we meet again. And so, Father, we thank you, Father God, that we are living examples for you. Wherever we go, we take the word. We take, Father God, your teachings, Father God. We take the gospel, the good news of salvation. And, Father God, that men may see you in us, Father God, and want to glorify you, Lord God, which is in heaven. So we thank you that we'll be true disciples. And we thank you that we will live a disciplined life. Father God, that they will see and know that you are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are risen from the dead and you are Lord. And so we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your word that will go forth in today. Many have already gone to service already early this morning. Father God, just like you rose early on a Sunday morning, Father God, we thank you, Father God, that many started with sunrise services. They've already given you the glory and the praise, Father God, and acknowledge your name. And so, Father, we thank you for those that came to know you because it's just not a ritual. Father God, that some one, Father God, people come to service on Easter Sunday. But Father God, let the God, Father God, that raised Jesus from the dead become a part of these people's soul. Father God, let them not just do it as a ritual, but Father God, help us to find you, Father, whom to know is life eternal. So we thank you that it will not be the same old, same old, but that the word that will be preached, Father God, will reson resonate with us all throughout the week, Father, and that we will be um, different because we've heard the word. And so we thank you. We won't be just only challenged, but we will be changed. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor. And we lift up your name in praise and in worship, Father God. Adoring you, Father God. Worshiping you. Giving you praise, glory, and honor. That is so rightfully due unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah.
Sunday when we celebrate your resurrection. Lord, we just thank you that you're living in us. You are, Lord, your resurrection power is in us. So, Father, as we share the word today, let us sense your power, your healing power, your restoration power moving in, in and around our lives as we share the word of God today. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is risen. Can we say he is risen? risen. And he is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We will thank God. Amen. That we are still on the land of the living to rejoice and to sing and to proclaim his name and walk, walking and living in his purpose. Amen? Amen. And that's what we are to do as Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're not a Christian, uh, today, we're going to share the word of God with you, and we're going to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to talk about Jesus, our resurrected Lord. And we welcome all of our friends, everyone that's in the house of God, and all those who are watching us via streaming on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all over. And we're going to also share the word of God. Amen? Let's put our hands together and welcome them. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's put our hands together and welcome our listeners. Come on. Glory to God. All right, amen, amen. So we're going to talk about our resurrected Lord. I'm not sure I'm going to change. I'm going to change the microphone. Go ahead. Amen. Glory be to God. So we're going to talk about our resurrected Lord. Amen. Praise him. Okay. This is all better. Hallelujah, our resurrected Lord. So today we're going to talk about Jesus, our resurrected Lord, and we're going to talk about the power and purpose of his resurrection. And we're going to look into the Word of God in uh, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 11, 25 to 26, and I believe you can see it on the screen, and you can just read it along with me. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die, believes thou this. And so, Father, we just thank you for your word as we attempt to talk about your, the power and purpose of your resurrection. Help us, God, to understand why you came and why you became our resurrected Lord, why you died on the cross and you rose again and you burst out of the tomb, went to hell, and you got the keys of hell, death, and the grave. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? And so, Father, we thank you that we serve a risen Savior, and he is working and dwelling in my life today. Can we all say hallelujah? hallelujah. So as we look at, at the Word of God, as we look at the power and purpose of his resurrection, uh, Jesus said what no other spiritual leader can say, or what other cultic leader can say. And I thank God that we have put our trust in Jesus. Somebody say, thank God that I put my trust in Jesus. One more time. Somebody say, thank God. I, I hear grumbling. I know somebody will have on your back. Somebody say, thank God. I put my trust in Jesus. And so Jesus said and declared it. He says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And if we were to think as um, scientists and innovators, I mean, in our day, they would say that I have the patent. So Jesus, if he were to live among us, he would have the patent and the resurrection, and he would have the patent and life. And again, no other sect, no other leader can say that. And even Jim Jones of Ghana and who was calling himself as the Lord can say that. But Jesus declares, I am the resurrection and the life. I want a Jesus who can declare that he is the resurrection and the life. And he has the power to resurrect himself. And also he has the power to resurrect the saints. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
So Jesus declares, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he said, do you believe this? So therefore, as a Christians, the Bible talks about the sting of death. Death has a sting. It is a foreboding. We have never been there before. We have never been into the threshold of death. And that's the sting of death. But however, Jesus says that he has the resurrection power. And he has the power to raise the saints from the dead. Somebody say hallelujah. He says, you see here what he says. So... You were dead, yet shall you live. And so therefore, that's the promise and the commandment we have from Jesus. That if we die in Christ, we're going to live forever with him. Somebody say hallelujah. We are comforted because he says, in my father's house are many mansions, are many rooms. Yes, I mean, that has a sting, but we serve a Lord, we serve Jesus, who had the power to even resurrect himself. Somebody said, thank God, I put my trust in Jesus. Somebody say, hallelujah. I just said, Jesus, he lifted all of the Lord, a heavy load, and a heavy weight. He went, he was beaten, I mean, to nothing less. And his, his, his flesh was torn by the cat and nine tail, with that that tore his body with. And he bled and shed his precious life blood for you and went into the tomb. But uh, he burst out. And Matthew chapter 28 tells us that he came forth triumphantly. Somebody say hallelujah. And the first person to show up to preach the good news was a woman. All the women said, hallelujah. Because uh, the woman, she had faith and believe in that. Uh, when she go to that tomb, she would not see Jesus uh, wrapped up in there. But when she went, uh, she saw a, 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 an angel. And the angel said that he is not here, for he is risen. Can we say that one more time and say, he is? Oh, that was a kind of grumble. Come on, somebody said, he's not here. But he is what? He is risen. And so that's why we serve our risen Savior. Somebody say hallelujah. And so Jesus says in Revelation 1 and 18 and 2 and 8. He said, I was dead. This is the Jesus who died on the cross. Paid the penalty for our sins. Went into the tomb. Died. Rose again. Went into hell. And got the power of death, hell and the grave and the keys. Somebody say hallelujah. In Revelation 1 18 says, I am he who lives. Uh, do you know a, a leader who died and came back? Buddha, Bahá'u'lláh, Hail Celestia, who came back and said, I was dead. I mean, they, they are still, I mean, decayed, their bones are still in the grave. I think they're about dust now. Somebody said, mm -hmm. But my Jesus, who went into uh, the tomb, he said, I am he who lives. And I was dead. Jesus came back to represent his, himself. I said, I died. But I'm here now. Somebody say hallelujah. I am he who lives. And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He he, come on. Somebody said, he's alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades. And of death. Revelation 1.18. He holds the keys. Of death and of hell. Somebody say hallelujah. So therefore if you're listening to us. He can unlock the spirit of death. Spiritual death. And physical death. And he can unlock up hell for you. If you would only open your heart. And let Jesus into it. Can we put our hands together. And say thank God. Come on let's put, put our hands together. I said, thank God that he holds the keys. And uh, if you're a sinner, he holds uh, uh, the key. And only you can allow Jesus uh, to put the key in the slot and uh, lock uh, at the, the gates of hell over your life. Uh, all you got to do is open your mouth and say, Jesus, uh, come into my life. Be the Lord and master of our lives. You see, what happened that sometimes we hear, we hear the word of God over and over. And, and it becomes uh, trite. It becomes simple. But we are going to preach the word of God and preach the word of God that when people, people do not repent and they go to hell, they will even preach the word of God that they heard even in hell for themselves. But there is no deliverance in hell. I hear you back. Somebody say hallelujah. I am he. I tell you, I thank God that we put our trust in a Jesus 
who can rebound back, who can resurrect himself and come back and say, I am he. Look at me. You put me on the cross. You put the, the nails in my hand and my feet. You pierced my side. You put a crown of thorns upon my head and blood and water came out. And I, I wanted to give up. But I, when I spoke to my father and said, God, take this cup. This cup is too much for me. Then I remember the first man, Adam, and he gave up the cup to the enemy and sin came. And the second Adam came into the world. He said, I just can't give up. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Somebody say, hallelujah. And sometimes as Christians, I was going through and uh, the press is hard and uh, so you may have gone through divorce and you may gone through hardship and defection by a wife or a husband and, I mean uh, and it things and you may have no money in your pocket and you want to throw in the towel uh, like Jesus said nevertheless, nevertheless I hear one person shout come on somebody say nevertheless I tell you, listen, all the rejection, and all the rejection, and all the rejection cannot become peered because while you're going through the rejection, the enemy is putting some seeds in your head to do some crazy stuff. But somebody said, thank God. Nevertheless, Lord God, I want to do your will. Can, can somebody say, nevertheless? The enemy wants me to give up. The enemy wants me to throw in the towel. The enemy wants me to cuss and fume and, and say some curse what I've never said before. But somebody say, oh, somebody, somebody preaching with me. Somebody say, never, never. Let's, we take the sign of Jesus on this resurrection morn. Crazy things will happen to good people. Crazy things will happen to Christians. Good type pain Christians. Somebody say, mm -hmm. But the enemy is going to come to test you and tempt you. But you got to end it in your heart and nevertheless. Because Jesus had it within his heart and even know in the, in the sanctums of heaven he knew that he had to come to do the will of God. When he approached the sting of death and the weight of sin and the emaciation of his body. He said, my God, this is too much for me. I know I, I prepared in heaven. I prepared in the womb of God. I am the, the seed of God, seed of the Holy Spirit. But when I face this one, it's hard. Somebody say, uh-huh. And so, like Jesus, you're going to face some hardships as Christians. I uh, hear nobody saying something. Just nod your head. Somebody say, uh-huh. But, but, but what you want, to touch your business, I want. Like Jesus, I want. What, what you want? What the word is? Not my will. Not my will. Not my will. And I never the that. Somebody say, hallelujah. One more time, but what? Never. Not my will, but what? Your will be done. When you face a test, when you face temptation, look at the cross. Look at Jesus. Somebody say, hallelujah. And your crazy boyfriend and girlfriend show up. Look at Jesus. I, I, nobody saying nothing now. Look at the preacher. Now nah, you're not those coming into church. One more time. When crazy my boyfriend show up, you look to who? Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He like bread crumbs. Oh, ah, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody said nevertheless. Why go back to the old vomit? Why go back? Ah, come on. Why back to? Why back to the old vomit? I'm still talking about resurrection. Why go back to the old vomit? Oh, I'll knuckle up your head again a second time. And some of you have got to a time. Egg up your head a third time. Scramble up your head. Jesus. But what you need, you need a strength. Like Jesus to say. Put your hand on your belly one more time so we need do nothing but help yourself. And say what? Never let it. I'm going to do, I'm going to be a wisdom man, a wisdom woman, and I'm going to obey God this time around. Somebody say hallelujah. And so the hymn writer who got caught up in this resurrection power of God, he wrote, this is Alan Jackson wrote, I serve a risen savior. I wish my, the organist was on the organ, but he's on It's okay, you're all right. <laughs> and he's in uh, the world today. Maybe we could find it back there to end with it. He said, I serve the risen one, Savior. He's in the world today, not in the sermon that you have back there. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of what? Mercy. Somebody say mercy. Mercy. Mercy that I did, that I did not what deserve. 
my God. When I put my hand in the cookie jar. And uh, Pastor that Hazel wasn't there, but only you. And the dog that wouldn't tell. Somebody said, mm. somebody said I serve. Yes, and then the comes dropping down. I, I serve. Oh, yeah. This is about resurrection. Somebody, I serve a merciful God. I serve a risen God. Somebody say hallelujah. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. He is cheering you on and say, you and I are failure. Somebody say hallelujah. Because my resurrection power in you. Oh, if you would only know the force and the power of this resurrection power that lies within you. You will know that God is cheering you on. Somebody just wave and say, he's cheering me on. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer when I want to give up, when I want to make the news because of a hardship of life. And just the time I need him, he is what? Instantly there. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. Not only he walks with me, but he walk, talks with me. Come on, somebody say he walks with me and talks with me. I, I, I want to save you. I, I feel God. I, I watch out. I just need to talk to you, but I feel something. I, I, I want to save you that I could walk and talk to when I'm down low. My God, when I ain't have no money in my pocket, when I'm going through the, the trauma of life and, and, and the hard press of life, I want to talk to Jesus and I want a Jesus that can talk back to me. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's the beauty of our resurrected Lord and Savior. We can communicate with him. We can talk with him. Have a little talk with Jesus. And he's going to make it right. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm. A, a long life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation too. In part. I love that. He asked me how I know he lives. He lives where? Everybody shout and say he lives. He's in my heart. Ah, my God. I tell you that man went into the inner sanctum. So that we call hymns. Hymns are high, high men. High men. All of you to break into the holy of holies. And that can be your hymn today to break in to the holy of holies. Somebody say hallelujah. And Jesus declares that he is the firstborn. From the dead in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. It should be there. You could just read it. Colossians 1 18 says, And he is the head of the body. He is the head of the church. Somebody say, He's the head of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. So that in everything he might have the supremacy. And it is. So he is the first in everything. Somebody say, My God. Is first in everything. Jesus declares in Revelation 22 and verse 13. He says, I am the Alpha. Come on, somebody say, He is the what? Alpha. And He is the first. And He is the last. The beginning and the end. Somebody say, Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, He is the first to pop into the womb of aversion without any, I mean, any sexual escapade. But the Holy Spirit just went in the womb and just panned the egg at the right spot. Somebody said, mm -hmm. I can't hear the house up in here. So he is the first to have a virgin birth. Somebody said, first. And so he is the first over the church. So if, if the church has some problems, so you know, you know what happening? You talk to Jesus about the church problem. Somebody said, mm -hmm. as the apostle, I talk to Jesus about the church problem. Oh, Somebody said, hallelujah. Because Colossians 1, a lot of stuff in Revelation, a lot of revelation in Revelation. Ah, somebody said, mm -hmm. Colossians 1 18, and he is the head of the, the body. Jesus is the head of the church because he died on the cross, went into the tomb, burst out the tomb, and he said, I'm first. I am in charge. I am the chief cornerstone of the church. Anything plaguing the church, talk to Jesus first. Can somebody shout? Uh, can somebody shout and say, Jesus? Jesus. Why? Well, the church is going to a rocky place and a hard place. Gather up the intercessors. Gather up the mourners. Gather up folks in sackcloth and spend some time. If you can't get in the church house, at least get around the church house. I drive by the church and so we're going to have revival up in there. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm not a good, this is a good thing. 
that when you pass by global church, like church, you're saying, so, you say, God, we're going to have revival up in this church. What are you going to say? Oh, somebody listening, somebody listening. Colossians chapter 118, I like the resurrection power. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning. So I say, he is the beginning. He began the beginning. I want to put my trust in somebody who knows how to lay a strong foundation. And that's the foundation and the church is laid upon. That, that is the foundation that I rest upon and I stand upon. That's the foundation every believer stands upon somebody say hallelujah and put your hands together somebody say hallelujah i tell you some people they find themselves in some desert and their leader came out from some desert and I start writing some some script and somebody else came out from some place in Utah and start writing rewriting the Bible but I, I, I want to put my trust and my faith and confidence that is something that evolved on the earth but I put my faith and and confident that something that came from heaven somebody say hallelujah something that supersedes the earth come on somebody say something that I can't hear the house up in there. I'm preaching the best I can. I want to put my trust in something, in someone that supersedes an earthling. I want to put my trust and my faith, I feel God, and my confidence in my Jesus. Can somebody shout, Jesus? Jesus! Why Jesus, my God! He is the beginning. Then he said, I'm the firstborn. First. Virgin born, come on, somebody say what? And then the first born out from the tomb, put me in the tomb, seal it, put the Roman soldiers there, I'm going to show you where he's the boss, somebody say hallelujah. And anytime Jesus, he rode on a donkey, he changed that donkey into a prince of a donkey, somebody say, mm -hmm. let Jesus touch your heart. And then when Jesus went on the Roman cross, a rugged cross. Everybody feared that cross. Jesus knew what the Romans did. Apparently he was doing some miracles passing by and watching somebody on the cross groaning and moaning. And they would leave you up there and they would die on that cross. My God. Somebody say my God. If you commit a treason, bam on the cross. Woo, my God, you say anything again the Romans, Romans are banging the cross because they were the, 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 the ones who control the world at that time. Like, like America controlling the world. And no longer, I mean, and you think about Jesus passing by, look at the cross, he said, my God, I, that is what I'm going to face. What that man up there is facing right now. Whoop. My God. So I said, my God. So, so, so this was a thing that happened during the day. It was that Jesus alone thing. But, but Jesus knew what was happening. He knew the punishment of the day. Oh, somebody said, mm -hmm. And he looked at him and said, My God, one day I'm going to go there. Really, really, Lord, that's harsh. But he went for us. Somebody said, He went for me. Just for me. Yeah, somebody said, Hallelujah. Just Put your hands together and say, He went for me. He went for me. First, first, first. First, first, Christian on the cross. First, Son of God on the cross. Put me and we listen, listen, and then God changed the cross. He said, Aha, uh -huh, you put me on the cross. You put the man Christ Jesus on the cross. I'm going to change it for a thing of cruel hatred. Anybody hated on the cross? Somebody said, Aha. Uh -huh. And he changed it into a thing of purpose. He changed it into a thing of glory because there'll be glory in the cross. And then Jesus changed the cross into a thing of Power. Somebody say glory and power. Yeah. I just those two we can deal with right now. Somebody say glory. glory. I hear we know by somebody say glory. glory and the power. So when you see a chain dangling, say Jesus, that's a good witnessing tool. Yeah, you know that Jesus changed the rules on that cross. It was an old rugged cross that mean that meant hatch treatment, death and cruel death, right side up, upside down, crossway. Anyway, it is cruel. Somebody said, mm-hmm. But once Jesus went on it, he changed it into somebody say glory. glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Power. Power. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And that's what happened when Jesus comes into your life. He can change, animate, and inanimate things, living and non-living things. He likes to operate. Any, any realm he can operate in. 
He operates in the supernatural, the spiritual, the glory realm. He operated. He operates in the underground. Somebody say, uh -huh. Hey, devil, watch out. Jesus is coming down. And when he comes down, he's taking away by the keys of death and of hell. Oh, my God. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Ah, come on. Somebody say, Jesus. I feel God right here. Somebody say, Jesus. He operates in every realm, heavenly realm, earth realm, and all of the earth. And any time he is let loose in any realm, boom, he's going to go and do, and he's going to uh, uh, exact a purpose in the realm that he's ascended to. Somebody put your hands together and thank God. Somebody say hallelujah. Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. And then he says, I'm the firstborn from the dead. So Christians, somebody said, a sting of death. And some of us have long loved ones gone over. I have my grandmother's I went over. Grandmother, great grandmother. I have my father went over. Somebody say hallelujah. Some of us have loved ones over. Uh, but, but take heart and take courage. He says, uh, Jesus, he was the firstborn from the dead. So that in everything he might have uh, the, the power. So every he has the power over everything. Somebody say hallelujah. Put your hand right there and thank God. Just say he has power over everything. Yeah. He has power over everything. He has power over the saints life. And he has power over the unsaved life. Somebody say hallelujah. And so Colossians chapter 118 in the New Living Translation says. So he Jesus is the first in everything. Somebody say hallelujah. There are some people who are cooking up a religion. They are like second and fifth in everything. Somebody say aha. But the Jesus that we put our church, our, our trust in. Somebody say he is first. I'm not hearing you. Come on, I'm helping you. Come on, somebody say, he is what? First in everything. Woo, hallelujah. And so therefore, Jesus, he declares, I would say he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus' purpose for coming in the earth. There was a purpose why Jesus came into the earth. And then we look into John 12, 32 to 36 says, He came into the world to die. He knew in heaven, he says, I, I come to do your will, O God. He came to do the will of God. He knew it up in heaven that that's his will. Because Adam failed. Then Jesus became the second Adam. And he said, I can't fail. It doesn't matter how excruciating the cross and death. But he knew he had a commandment from the Father. And we're going to see that commandment. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. No other religious leader can say that. Not, not even Hill Selassie. Krishna. Our moon, all these people are dying. Buddha, Bahaula, call the names as a lineup. Do not put your, your, your trust in dead idols, in a big belly God who cannot do anything for you. Somebody say hallelujah. Those things are demonic. I ain't hear nobody. Because you, you see them when, you, when we go down town and we go into some of the restaurants, we see. Uh, I will give my money to the pot belly, big pot belly gods. Every, every Somebody say hallelujah. Can, can, can a Christian open a restaurant so I can go and spend some money with a Christian with a cross? Yes. Come on, come on. One more time, can a Christian open a restaurant uh -huh, uh -huh. that I could go in and say them put a cross? Can a, can a Christian open a jewelry store downtown and put a cross up now? Yes, again. Right. Even though I'm preaching, I'm actually stoned. I, I'm on an anointing right now. Shela bakatan, shade bakatan. Come on, somebody put in the Holy Ghost, put in the Holy Ghost. Ah, yeah, that... no, 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 change it. The resurrection changes your mindset. Yes, yes, yes. Changes your outlook. Shut up. Come in the Holy Ghost. Master of the 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 Listen, they're human just like you too. And they start from zero to what they have. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to start somewhere. And then, and, 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 Hope somebody writing it down so folks to get a resurrection servant. <laughs> Notes. Jan 12, 32. Hallelujah. Jan 12, 32 to 33. He says, 
and I, and I, if I be what lifted up from the earth, will do what? Will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. If I be what lifted up under cross, he was prophesying his death in John 12, 32, 33. He said, I, I, if I only be lifted up, I'm going to change the order of things. I'm going to change the old covenant way of doing things. No longer will you have to, uh, 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 my sister Mona, run behind a turtle dove to catch it to, to bring to the priest. Ah, uh, somebody said, uh -huh. no longer, sister Hasina, you run behind a, a sheep. And he's not any kind of sheep. He has to be without a spot or wrinkle. So think about that now. And if you, if you want that, I heard that, you will have to shoot it, get up some money in your pocket to go buy us a sheep and hope that when it reaches to the priest, it has no spot or wrinkle. Somebody said, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So that's what under the old covenant. But Jesus said, uh-huh. I came to do your will, O oh God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The enemy and his group and his gang, the Jews and the Gentiles and the Romans, they are saying, crucify him, crucify him. And he's saying, if I can only be lifted up, if I can only be to a place of crucifixion, well, I can preach right here too, but some of you might not be able to take it. Somebody said, but if I, if I lift it up, drop out. I don't preach. I preach about Jesus. Somebody said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to start something revolutionary. I'm going to start drawing men and women, boys and girls, out of hell. Somebody said, hallelujah. I'm going to overthrow the plans of the enemy. Somebody said, hallelujah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a such a room at the enemy. He think that he's going to keep me in the tomb, keep me on the cross, keep me in that door. But I, he did not know that I have a commandment from God that I have power within myself to resurrect myself. Put your hands together. Somebody. Somebody said, hallelujah. Somebody said, hallelujah. I want a Jesus who can testify. If I be lifted up, a man will come and kill me, spit upon me, beat me to smithereens. I'm gonna, I, I am going to be a, a, your sin's penalty, your sin's punishment. I will be. No more shall you go around grabbing a, a, a lamb, a cow, a calf, to the dog. But I will be your substitute. Ah, somebody's for your sin. Somebody say hallelujah. Not only once, but he says once and for all. Put your hands together. So therefore you don't have to go crawling. You don't have to go and put a, a nail in your hand. Oh no, no, Jesus paid it all. Come you let's put our hands together in church and out as a Jesus. Paid it all. Somebody say hallelujah. I want to put my trust, my faith, and confidence in a Jesus who can stand the punishment and the cruel punishment for my sins. And can, can we all say thank you, Jesus? I can't hear you. Come on. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. His death, he came to die. His death was of his own volition. V-O-L-I-T-I-O-N. A big word that means will. He died. His death was of his own will. He had so much power within himself that he could have said, uh -huh, watch me. Watch me levitate off of these nails. He had the power. Somebody say he had the what? He had the power. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the power to say within himself. Hey, hey, he had the power. He came up from heaven. The Bible said he had the power within the himself. This ain't no natural power. This is supernatural power. Come on, somebody say supernatural. So in the pain, listen, if it was oral and I had some supernatural power, I think Jesus might have to get a second or so I got power to levitate off of this cross. And I came off. I had to look, 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 look. I had no nails in my hand. No, no, not even the prince. But Jesus, I'm going to stay. Come on, somebody said, Jesus says what? Even though I have all this power, and even though I am one with the Father, even though I'm a, a son of the Father, I got the, unless I have the same power that God has, because I'm one with the three in three, but they're, but they're all operating to, to assist me in making this particular sacrifice. God in play. So they could do it. Up until a point, he turned his face, and he got to pay it all. And the Holy Spirit said, son, 
I'm, I'm with you. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. I tell you, the world in prayer. Uh, heaven, was, uh, heaven was not sitting down. Come on, somebody say heaven was that? Because we had God in it. Hallelujah. We had Jesus in it. We had the Holy Spirit in it. And then we had the angels in it. The angels say he's not what? He. Come on, somebody said the angels say what? Oh, yeah, Baba. Hey, listen, listen, heaven was active. And like, like heaven was active on the resurrection day, heaven is active today yes. to remove sickness. Come on. Hey. Is, I hear when you come on, let me try to man. And infirmity, come on, come on, come on. Hey. Oh, somebody said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Heaven is active concerning your situation, hey. your problem. Hey. Heaven is active concerning your cruelty, hey. your harsh treatment, hey. your husband or wife, or by a boss. I got heaven. Heaven is active. Concerning you, uh, somebody who molested you, somebody who ill treated you, didn't know your virtue and your value. Heaven is active on your case. Can somebody put your hands together and act like a preacher can have Heaven is still active. I feel God. Heaven, somebody say, Heaven is active. Uh, whether your, co your, your case is open or closed, it depends on you. You can say, Heaven, I want my, co my case closed today. You, 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 you gotta do it, you can do it. And, you, and anytime you, you feel like the enemy want that your case to be open, say heaven, close that case. Somebody say hallelujah. Because I want freedom. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus obtained his freedom by, go, by going from the virgin birth. That, that's not supernatural too. Come on, somebody say that's supernatural. And then the cross, that's supernatural. Watch out the biggie. Boom, now you're talking about today, resurrection. Experiencing death and then experience resurrection. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This was Je Jesus was the son who believed his father in every step. We need some sons and daughters who can believe in their father and their mothers in every step of their way. Somebody say hallelujah. I still believe that father and mother knows. We're the mothers and fathers. Ah, somebody said, hallelujah. His death was of his own will. And he says, in, in John 10 and 17, he says, I lay down my life that I might take it up again. Nobody else can say that. No man takes it from me. But I lay down of myself. I have power. Somebody said power. power. To lay down my life. And I have power to take it up again. Come on. Come on. Somebody said power. power. He could have refused the, the virgin birth. He had power. All we need was a seed planted in there. He could have refused going on that cross. He could have refused going in there. But he said, I got to do it. Come on. Somebody said, I got to do, do it. Because heaven was cheering him on. Yeah, yeah. And he bore the harsh cruelty. Harsh penalty, and he bore the price for our soul salvation. Can you put your hands together and say thank the Lord? Somebody say hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Oh, look at this. You got, you got to match some of these, man. When I study this, I say, man, God, this thing is messing with me. Hear what he says. I have power to lay down my life. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. Yeah. You hear this? It says this commandment. Everybody said this one? This commandment. Have I received of my father? So Jesus obeyed his father. This is what this is this was not an earthly commandment. We got insight into a supernatural commandment. We got insight as believers into what happened. In, in the holy sanctum yeah, 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 yeah. and the talk, the teeter talk, the teeter teet between yeah. God and Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And then he brought it down and said, This is a commandment that my father gave me. Uh -huh. He said, Son, you might be fearful about doing all this, but you have the power within yourself. Uh -huh. I, Daddy God, I've given you the power uh -huh. that you lay your life down. You, 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 you got the power. Why are you within you to raise yourself up again? Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. The Jews didn't know that. The Romans didn't know that. All the Gentiles who gathered up around the throne saying crucify me. They don't do that. Ha! The devil didn't know that. Somebody said, mm. And all the demons who were saying, I got it. 
We are breaking up the sun, the supernatural link right between heaven and earth. We are breaking up this, this, this uh, spiritual salvation that he came to go. We, we got him. Somebody said, uh, uh, while hell was showing his party. One more time, while what? Hell was showing his party and the earth showing their party and everybody knocking their wine mugs and wine glass and getting drunk at his crucifixion. Jesus just, I, you, you know, he had a moment. I, life start coming back. Somebody said, life start what? Coming back. Heart start beating. Uh -huh. uh, flesh wounds start healing. Somebody said, mm -hmm. side wounds start healing. Somebody said, mm -hmm. I start popping open. Somebody said, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. the tongue can start walking yeah. again and start talking again. Somebody said, uh -huh. strength came to his feet. Somebody said, uh -huh. strength came to his hand and his hand. Somebody said, uh -huh. strength came to all his vital signs, all his organs in his body. Somebody said, mm -hmm. yeah. can I be a doctor for a little bit? And then the circulatory system started pumping again. Somebody said, uh-huh. And the blood in his heart began to what? pump again. But this, but this blood that pumped spoke about restoration of the kingdom of God. I feel God right there. Ah, somebody said, hallelujah. The blood that was pumping into Jesus' body said, I will never go through this again. I will never die again. I have obtained everlasting life. Somebody said, hallelujah. And if he obtained everlasting life, you and I, we are going to receive everlasting life. And we can shout like Paul and say, absent from the body present to be with God. Can you put your hands together and just bless God? Thank you, Father. Thank you. Woo! Somebody said, hallelujah. Mm, I feel God. And so Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture. It says that Christ in 1 Corinthians 15 3 says that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. No, no other prophet can attest to that. That what? Everybody shout what? what? Christ Jesus. There are some preachers that got to, uh, themselves mis mix, mis mis Mix, mix, messed up. Mix up. It's okay. I'm on a little glory, but but a little messed up. Somebody said, uh -huh. yes. We start once talking about hell and heaven and so on, and they said, there ain't no heaven, no hell, and all kind of crazy stuff. Somebody said, mm -hmm. oh my God, help me. But some of them, some of the congregations were even better, um, knowledgeable than them, and they left their church and said, you pass all by yourself. Mm -hmm. I hear you, nobody. I call your name. Ah, somebody said, Hallelujah. They had enough. Uh, Bible knowledge to know that uh, he, this 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 prophet that we have here going wrong, uh, and I gotta leave this church quick. Somebody said, "Uh huh," and that's what you do when some some somebody begin to I mean manipulate, control, and start talking things like that in the world that God contrary, and it's gonna happen in the last days. You better know your word about the resurrection story. Somebody said, "Hallelujah!" Hallelujah! Whoa! Somebody said, "Hallelujah!" This Christ, uh, He died for my sins. I want a Christ. Uh, who can die for my sin? Somebody said hallelujah. In Jesus' resurrection, we see displayed reconciliation. It says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19, God was in Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing. Imputing there is an accounting word in not crediting their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So when we talk about reconciliation, it means to cause restoration. It means a harmony. Somebody say harmony. And so in his death, it means Jesus in his death reconciled or caused a change in men or women, boy or girl. It means that Jesus in his death reconciled us to God. When he reconciled us to God, a supernatural change has, I mean, began in our lives and shifted us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Somebody say hallelujah. And every saint is wired that we will never die. We may taste death in this life, but we just move on to be with him. Somebody say hallelujah. That is just a corridor. That that is just uh, the vehicle that takes us uh, from this earth uh, atmosphere, this earth planet, uh, to the to the planet heaven. Come on, somebody, say, I'm ready. I'm ready for planet heaven. It's a sting. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm. And so he says, I did this. There is more. He says, 
Hallelujah. Woo. And Jesus, he ransomed us. Somebody said he redeemed me. Then he ransomed me because of his death. In 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6, it says there is one God. Somebody say one God. One God. Say it one more time, one God. One God. Uh, some preachers ought to know that there is what? One. one God. And there are some other people who need to know. Hallelujah. Because people think that when they have money in the pocket, they can tell God about his theology. Money are no, mo no money. His word is set in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So money are no money. You can't tell God about his commandments. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It says there is one God and one mediator between God and man. Mankind, the man, Christ Jesus. Can we say Jesus? Jesus. And he says, who gave himself as a ransom for all the people. This has, this has now been witness to at this proper time. When we talk about ransom, it means the price. Jesus paid. Jesus paid it all. Can we shout and say, Jesus what? He redeemed me. He ransomed me. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus, he is my redeemer. According to Ephesians 1 and verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. His shed blood had a purpose on the cross. Lift me up on the cross. If I only be lifted up. And if I only do not change my mind from being lifted up. And everything that happened in the cross. It happened for a purpose. And it has a purpose. And its purpose is all because of you. Somebody say hallelujah. Can you put your hands together and say God for that purpose. Purpose. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Somebody said his grace is not bankrupt. His grace is rich. Somebody say hallelujah. So if you're poor and bankrupt in sin today, just say God, I want the richness of your grace. Can you shout it for the word as a God? I need the richness of your grace. Somebody say hallelujah. His grace is not bankrupt. His grace has no measure. I feel God right here. Woo, his grace is not bankrupt. And his grace is still available in the earth. We are now living under the canopy of grace. So if you're a sinner man, sinner woman, sinner boy, sinner girl, come to Jesus and grab onto his grace now. Because when he shows up, he's going to show up as Jesus will come back and show you, show you up as the judge. Somebody say hallelujah. Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. So redemption means to deliver. Somebody said to deliver. Redemption means to save. And redemption means that he paid the full price. I like a God. I like a God. I like a Jesus who can go all the way. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus' death offers everlasting life to all who will believe. Somebody say I'm a believer. In Romans 5 and verse 6. Romans 5 verse 6. Somebody write them up. It says for when... We were yet without strength. It means when I was a drunkard, when I was a prostitute, not looking so nice as we are, and we welcome the prostitutes. Jesus welcome, hallelujah, the ditch digger who doesn't know him. He welcomes the president and kings and princes. He welcomes the poor. He welcomes the trillionaires. He welcomes Putin. He welcomes the Ukrainians. Somebody say, I can't hear the house up in here. I want to pray in the house right by now. Somebody put your hands together and say, he's welcoming them. Somebody say, hallelujah. He says, for when we were yet without strength, when we were messed up and weren't looking so nice as we are, we forgot where we came from. For when we were, we had no strength to come to God. He says, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And so we thank God that we have a Christ who in due time died for us. Put your hands together and say, God, I thank you for dying for us. It, it was not a light thing. That was a heavy thing. A thing that Jesus could have been the second animal who changed his mind. And then God would have to come up with another plan. Right, God? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say, but Jesus did. In Romans 5, 8, he says, but God commendeth his love towards us, or towards me. Come on, person lies and said towards me. In that while we were yet sinners, what? Christ died for me. Lift your hands up at home and in church and say, God, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Bearing the hash 
punishment as cruelty just for me. You made it easy for me to come. You said in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, come believe it, open my mouth. And said, Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord and Master and Savior of my life. According to my belief and confession, then Jesus comes into my life. Can you put your hands together there? So those who need him may know. Can you put your hands together and then just celebrate that? Put your hands together. Right? Oh, in John 3, 17, it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He doesn't come to condemn you, but that the world through him might be what everybody shall save. So Jesus is not condemning you. Grace is available for you now. Come to the Jesus. Come to the throne of grace now. Make an altar wherever you are today. In your home, in your car, under a tree, in an airplane, and in a tourist ship, on vacation, on vacation. Make, uh, make a throne of mercy and cry out for mercy for your life, your husband life, your children life, and come to Jesus. It seems as if this pandemic hasn't shaken us up enough for us to look upward, heavenly word. But the grace is coming to you, and I pray that we are able to look at heaven word during this resurrection Sunday. Can I have somebody give me a little praise on their hands or something? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Somebody say hallelujah. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. Somebody say Jesus. He is the chief cornerstone of the church of salvation, of our spirituality without Jesus. We are nothing. Without Jesus, we are doing this thing in a void, in a vacuum. We are doing this thing ever in emptiness, but thank God Jesus took the void of it and he placed faith in it and hope in it and we trust him with our faith and we hope, hallelujah, in the grace of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus Christ, he is the chief cornerstone don't look for another chief cornerstone jesus is singular the chief what everybody shout, shout what oh yes in, in, in acts 2 24 it says who god has raised up god raised him up having loosed the pains of death thank god that god what raised him up in Acts 2 33 says this Jesus hath God raised up. Thank God Christ arose and he has given us the power. We have resurrection power and re resurrection life within, within every saint. Somebody say hallelujah. In John eleven twenty five 25 it says Jesus said unto her. Let's read this one. Hallelujah. This is the last before I come to the end. So everybody wake up now. Pray. Somebody help me pray. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray for souls to be saved all over the world. Christ arose to give resurrection life to all who will believe. His, his birth and his crucifixion and his death placed into a sealed tomb. Yeah, the devil his, and, and all the Gentiles who killed him thought that's the end of him. But God was working out his plan and purpose for the entire universe. Somebody say hallelujah. And then John 11, 25, 26 says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Somebody said, I am. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. That's the person who you ought to put your trust and your faith in. I am. I am, if you know English, present tense, operative. Right now, God, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. What other, what other entity, deity, young men in the Caribbean, I mean, you're putting your faith and trust in a Selassie who came to Jamaica and said, I am not a God. He had more wisdom to tell them, I am not your God. He showed up and he told them that. Somebody said, mm -hmm. I hear you. I don't know if those folks in this generation, they don't know. But he said, I'm not your God. I'm not your God. I'm the king of Ethiopia. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Can you see it? Can you try to read with me? He said, what? Can we come to an end? Say what? I am the resurrection and the life. He that what? Believes in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Speaking about two deaths. Physical death. Spiritual death. Somebody say what? Spiritual death. You're going to need it. 
when you reach the sting of death. I've seen people who reach the sting of death and they, they weren't prepared to meet their master. They weren't prepared. And so they all were saying, oh, give me ice, give me ice, give me water, give me ice, give me water. Straight until they die. Because they, have, they never made their peace with God. If you're here in this congregation, listening to us, this thing is not a Nancy story. This thing is not a white man thing. This one was written way back, centuries before the white man came on the scene. Way back in Hebrew, way back in Greek, which we have scrolls. We find them in, in, in caves. This is the truth. God created you and not yourself. Hey, somebody said, uh-huh, I think I'm right there. God created you and not yourself. You got a mouth, and your mouth is not to curse God. Look for alphabet. You said it was not in the uh, created yet. God, God, God is God, and he could, he could create something even before alphabet came on the scene. I said, boom, when the alphabet shows up. And, and a matter of fact, they are still writing other languages now. I, I can't hear you. There are still, I know some people group, they don't have a, a language in writing. And there are some Christians who are writing the word of God in their language so they can have a Bible or a book in their language. Don't mess with God. Somebody said, don't mess with God. And then when they reach that spot, they will know that that's Elohim. When they meet that spot, they will know that's Jesus. Only God can do it. That's supernatural stuff. You see, people want to pontificate with their wagging tongue. Uh, but, uh, but they want to preach to come on the talk show. And so they say, God has my This one is someone show up on the talk show and close it down. And talk some good theology. The God that we serve. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something. Listen, he got, he, listen, I tell you, listen. When, 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 when God, when Jesus came into the earth, Jesus, he started a momentum. I can't, come on, I can't. he started a revolution. And whether your language had somebody by the name of Jesus, and whether your language never had a word named Jesus, when you get to that word Jesus, boom, if you can't translate it, boom, drop it in Jesus. And what I want, drop it in the head of him. Uh, boom, don't change it. Put it in that G-O-D. You know when some people speak in Spanish, when they reach certain words, I have to say, Shalom Tamali. Come on, Shalom Tamali. Spanish, you can't tell Shalom Tamali. Spanish. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, man. Come on. We gotta get some wisdom up in here. So listen, listen. We're talking about supernatural momentum, supernatural acceleration. When God gets a thing, if God gets a language, He will put God in His language. One more time, when God gets His, I don't know, right there. Maybe somebody listen to me, cussing me, and God just happened to prophesy. When God gets a language, boom, He put Himself right there. Somebody say hallelujah. That spiritual, that that, that what you call supernatural. That we are supernatural access. That's what we call momentum. That's what we mean that God be in God over the earth. And as a matter of fact, uh, that language existed. It's just that they did not really tap into it yet uh, to write it and put God right there in that language. Because you see, you see, why people talking like that uh, is that they don't recognize who God is. That like when God get a, 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 an ass and when God get a donkey, so I was swearing. When God get a donkey, He will change that donkey into a prince. A prince of a donkey. Somebody say hallelujah. And the donkey will say, look at me right in the Jerusalem and the triumphant entry. Look at me. Jesus is on me. Somebody say hallelujah. And I end with the beginning when Jesus uh, went on that rugged cross, an inanimate object. And every of that men, men, women, boys and girls, Romans, Jews, Gentiles, everybody fear the Roman punishment. Jesus passed by his side. He said, my God, that's rough. But he said, I got to go there. Somebody said, uh-huh. But once Jesus went on the cross, come on, somebody say, once Jesus went on? Come on, say, say, come on. One more time, once Jesus what? Went on the cross. He changed it. From a thing of harsh, cruel penalty. That when you put it on, you're saying glory. Somebody say glory. You're saying justification. You're saying redemption. Somebody say hallelujah. So don't mind the unsaved wearing more cross than we can wear. Somebody say, mm-hmm. That's just a, a, a way to open up and say, you, you know the meaning of the cross? You know, do you know that? Everybody got to know that because nobody needs to talk to the sinners now. Do you know that? Of that cross. You might see somebody. And I might see somebody. I might go in a store after church. And I, I got to be bold and, and say when I preach. Somebody said, mm. All you're going to ask is, do you know the meaning of that cross? Uh, you're going to drop it up now. 
Okay. One more time. Do what? Do you, Do you know the meaning of that Jesus died on the cross for you? He bore the harsh penalty for you. You don't even have to go into a Bible to show a verse and scripture. From the cross, you can preach and teach salvation to all of the people you work with in the lunchroom. Somebody said, mm -hmm. Somebody said, mm -hmm. Clear your throat. Somebody said, mm -hmm. Somebody clear your throat. I'm giving you so much fun to eat. Nobody can eat you. <laughs> somebody said, mm. Ooh, yeah, yeah. My God. Somebody said, my, my God. The cross. Talk to somebody about the cross. I think that when Jesus got on it, it changed it from a bloody place to a place of glory. Justification. Remission. Sanctification. Salvation. He changed it. And then say, listen, Jesus wants to bounce off of that cross that you're wearing, and he wants to bounce into your heart. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And he'll, he will revolutionize. He revolutionized the cross, but more so, he wants to revolutionize the life of men, women, boys, and girls. One more time. He wants to do what? Come on, help me, help me close, help me close. So you can go and eat your, your Easter white rice. One more time. One more time. When he jumps on the cross. He wants to jump into the heart of men. Come on, help me. Men, women, boys and girls to start a revolution in their life. It's a revolution we are a part of. No more we walk in, in sin and in darkness. We are in the kingdom of his dear light. We're in a revolution of light. Understanding all about light so we can impart light to others. Put your hands together and clap your hands. Come on, come on, come on, clap your hands. Why price? Next revelation morning, we will bring the rest of Revelation. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1, as we do the call to Christ. Let's pray. Revelation 1 7 says, Behold, that song I wanted to sing, what is that? Remember the song we talk about? What is that? That's it? That's what we didn't say again? Yeah. That's yes, the one? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Either behind there or back. We're a community of over 19,000 doctors. Okay. Don't, don't, don't do that. We're going we to sing it. Help me, um, um, Minister Judy. To say here he's in the okay. world. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, Louis. Louis. All right. We've we got to do that one where we don't have to get the ads. But we're going to try it. If it comes up again, we'll stop. And see, some, somebody find it? We're going to lower it. We're not going to sing over it so high. We're going to lower it so they could kind of follow it. But Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 says, Behold, you have it there? Can you see it? And Revelation 1 says, Behold, he is what? Coming with the clouds. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will give an account of him. Tribes, within tribes, there are people and people groups. They're going to give an account because the word of God said in Romans, just by the sun going up, the stars and everything, they're testifying and signifying that there is a God someplace. For you to cry to and say, God, there has to be a God. You say, God, universe, I mean, why the universe that, uh, in a way that you're going to say, it's not high. There's some people with triple doctorate, three doctorate, six doctorate, 29 doctorates. And uh, they, they, they want to screw up everything. But God's word is short. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody said, he's coming again. It says in Matthew 24, 27, for as the lightning comes, it's going to be so quickly. Come from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the covering of the Son of Man. What? I, I, I implore you in the house, out the house, for us to be serious and put our trust in God. Because these are the last of the last days. These are the days to be falling, farming the food. These are days for us to get it right. Somebody said, gotta get what? We got people still are dying from COVID, the pandemic. You hear it down one day, up again. You, you understand me? So we got, we, we, we got to we gotta make our anchor short. Yes, yes. And we gotta make our anchor what? Short. If a ship comes in the, the harbor, the anchor must be what? Short. The anchor must be what? Short. The anchor must be fast. But even when the wave comes and it moves it, it can only move it around, around the anchor. Yeah, according to how the wind is blowing, you know, we are I can see the ships. And according to how the wind is blowing, everybody facing west. According to how the wind is blowing, everybody share the east. And, and, and all the ship, big and small, 
Because the anchor holds. Somebody say the anchor what? The anchor holds. The anchor holds. Lift your hands up and say, God, I want my anchor to what? One more time. Come on. One more time. Confess and say, God. And this resurrection morning, I want my anchor to hold. Lord God, cause this again as other people. Cause our anchor to hold. Because this thing is real. Real for me as the apostle of the house. Real for everybody in the middle. Real for everybody in the back of the church. Who come up the step of the church. Those who are outside the church. Those who are around the back of the church. Those who are listening to us. This stuff is not Nancy's story. As we call it in the Caribbean. A story. A tale. This is truth. This is written God. So we want you to come and believe it. In Jesus. If you're there, touch your cell phone. Touch your iPhone. iPad. Touch your TV. In touch, in church, touch your heart. Say Jesus. Now let's say it together. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I heard about your resurrection story today. I heard that you are my redeemer. I heard that you are my savior. I'm not here in the church. I hear that you are my savior. I want you to come and live in my heart today. Jesus, come and live in my heart today. Jesus, come and be the Lord and master of my life today. Jesus, come and be my savior today. Jesus, I reject. Come on, let's say that. Jesus, I reject. And I renounce the works of the devil out of my life. And I welcome today the works of Jesus into my life. I will study the word of God. I will listen to the word of God. I will find a church that preaches the whole counsel of God. Jesus, show me where I need to go to church. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're in St. Thomas, St. Paul, St. John, I tell you, St. Thomas, what I am, you want to come to Global Life Church, you're free to come. We meet here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Come, if you want to be a part of us, come. If you just want to come and congregate, come. And you just want to come and bounce back from the pandemic, COVID-19 messes up. But we are coming back, amen? amen. Even our governor in our land says, time to come back. Sometimes, and maybe some people in here, but he says, stand to what? Come back. That's some kind of dead man. Come, stand to what? Come back. He said, come back to the church. He even said, pay your tithe. The governor even said, say that. Okay? I'm going to tell the name of the preacher who told him to say that. But he said, he said, you can pay your tithe. He said, even come. He said, come back. Somebody say, hallelujah. So, Father, we bless your people. Come on, somebody say, what? Bless your people. In blessing, bless your people. Prosper your people. Make your people great again. Make your people abounding again. In the, in the resurrection story, the word of God says that God and heaven is cheering us up. You are not a loser. You are not a beggar. You are not a doubter. You are not a failure. But like Jesus, no matter the press, you're going to say what? Never. Nevertheless. Don't forget. What? Not your will. But not my will. But your will. We all gotta say that every time. Anytime the enemy wants to tempt us and we get to the temptation threshold. Remember Jesus on the cross. Remember Jesus in the tomb. Remember his resurrection. He paid it all just for you. God bless you. We love you. Put your hands together as we say. No, put your hands together. This time you're gonna take our communion. We're going to take communion and we're going to have mine right there open. Hallelujah. Open one. Yes, let's lift it together if you don't have one. Communion cup, just put your hands up to you. Somebody can get a bag to dispose it. So we can move very quickly. So Father, we lift the bread. This bread typifies what we were talking about. The broken body of Calvary of, of Jesus and Calvary's well gutters of bread. And we thank you as we celebrate today. We are celebrating what Jesus did for us. His birth, his death, his entombment, and his what? And his resurrection. But there is power in his resurrection. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in every one of the saints and we know we have the confidence if we die that Jesus hasn't come and blown the trumpet that absent from the body 
is present with God. Let's eat together as one church, living in love and unity, forgiving and also caring about one another and praying for one another, calling their names in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat together. Shake the cup a little. Hallelujah. Father, we lift the cup. This cup represents your shed blood in Calvary Street. Without the shedding of your blood, of your head, your hands, your side, your feet, your back, belly, side, all over. From that whip and the emaciation of your body, blood came forth. But that blood was shed for our remission. Without the remission. Hallelujah. The blood redeemed us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no cleansing. There is no purchasing us out of the trap and hell of sin. Lord, we leave the cup. Leave the cup with your kindness. Lord, I thank you. One more time, somebody said, Lord, I thank you. Oh, yes. We drink it together as one family, living in love and unity, caring about one another, discerning the blood of Jesus. Let your blood as we drink it now bring for healing, restoration in our bodies. Let goiters, cysts, abnormalities in our bodies, sicknesses in our bodies that the devil cannot discern, that, that doctors cannot even see or discern. Ailment that we know in our bodies. Let this work for us. And you said that your shed blood and broken body would work for us. It brings forth healing and restoration in the body of Christ, in the saints and believers' lives. In Jesus' name. But may we receive the benefit of it now in Jesus' name. Everybody shout. Amen. Amen. Let's drink it together as one family. You all say amen. Amen. Go ahead, lift it. Hallelujah. And someone will come with a disposable. Let's put it there with your hand. Who is coming with the disposable? Uh huh. Somebody waiting for somebody. Okay. Oh, we thank you. Somebody said, Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Go ahead. Say, say. Go ahead. I call you. Hallelujah. We didn't have to go and beg. 
Hallelujah, but we stood in faith. Amen? Come on, somebody say faith works. I hear nobody. Somebody say faith works. Hallelujah. So those who like to give up their tithes, amen, 10% of what you work for. And there are some people who are tithing out of their businesses. People are tithing out of, hallelujah, there are other businesses, I tell you. And that's what keeping the work of God going. Amen? I mean, the stream, hallelujah, but those who are watching the streaming, even the streaming is not free. I have to pay you a Wi-Fi bill. Hallelujah. There's a company. Hallelujah. So to stream the gospel. Amen? And so, Father, we thank God for those who are, are tithers, those who are giving above the tithes, who want to be blessed. Press down, shake it together, and they're running over. Hallelujah. Lord God, we pray a blessing upon those who tithe consistently. They have needs also, but they want to keep your house open. Then they're, they're not taking a penny pension, God. And then this re a resurrection morning, I pray that we will get more people who understand the tithe and pay the tithe once they have a permanent job and a good paying job to, to, to tithe so that God could take them up higher and put them on, on, on the top. And they would not keep up the economy of their own place where they work and the economy of our island. And so, Father, in blessing, bless your people. Give us a Jabesh connection. Somebody say a Jabesh connection. I hear it nobody. Somebody say Jabesh connection. No more no, no silent. We can't talk about money now. Jabesh. I'm prophesying over you. Jabesh had a sad story, sub story, because of his, his generation before. But he said, God, you bless me indeed. Change my name. I don't want it to be named Sorrow. No, change it. That was my mama's story. I don't want my mama's story to be my story. No, Father, change the order of things. We're in a revolution. We're in a momentum. We are in light. So, Father, in blessing, bless your people. Cause us not to, Lord God, here, Lord God, uh, to, to be, Lord God, a, a forgetful hero, but we hear the word of God. But we be doers of the word concerning every part of our lives. No, Father, in blessing your people. Widening the word of your people. The greatness within your people. Lord God, bring elevation in your people. Bring increase upon your people, those listening to us and those who are tithing and those who are giving. Because your word declares that you are no man's debtor. And on our envelope, it says, God is able to give us much more than this. Can we say that? That God is able to give us. Second Chronicles 25, 9, B says that the Lord is able to give over his much more than this. Turn your name and say, God is able to give me much more than this. Somebody say hallelujah. And can we have somebody come now and receive um, the offering? Today's offering. God is able. God is able. Oh, hallelujah. To make grace abound. Because it's much more abound to you. God wants you to prosper. Press down. Shake it together. And running over. Somebody say hallelujah. Then we shout like David. My cup is filled and running over. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, um, your daughter's name, Mariah, is Ma the one the one who ties. I'm a I'm a Amaya. 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 Amaya come. I don't know. The two of them don't want it. But we don't know. Amaya come along with your sister today. <laughs> no, I'm a master. Keep your mask. Um, but Amaya is a business. She's in business. This young lady, how old are you? She is 10 years and she is in business. And one of these Sundays, prepare. All right? I'm going to tell you, mommy, make sure you're going to do it right. One of these Sundays, so you, you do the little thing, but we're talking about big way. We're going to lay out the table back there. Hallelujah. Give her a good sale so she, you can bless her and she's going to tie it well. I didn't know she was in business, but she brought the money and said, Pastor, I'm in business. This is my tithes. The little one's word. The little one's word. Can I say nothing? The little one's word. Yeah. Put your hands together for her. Hallelujah. No, it's not dead. It's not dead. It's your money. So, Father, bless her. Bless her. Bless her. Help her to tap into apps. Apps. One app at 99 cents. My God, Sister Jazz, you're coming here dancing and leaping and praising God. And the title will be good too. So, smile on the link. I'm praying. I'm praying and prophesying. 
Now listen, listen, listen. Okay? If the, if the senior ones can do it, the young ones can do it. Listen. One app, one tree of an app that you put on your iPhone, iPad. What is something we don't have about laying our hands for young people? Let's try another one. Yes. Why do you want to know? Listen, this trillion dollar is not going to Apple all the time. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. One more time. This one? This trillion dollar is not going to go to Apple all the time. Every year. No, 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 no. no, no. Don't be anointed for the trillion dollar flow. We are anointed to have dreams. Start sleeping by your bed with a book. You say, Mommy, give me a book. The way you get a dream, whatever dream, a money dream, you write it down. What? She said, That is what I do. Like, oh, I, I had a dream or anything, I write it down. Get the walk in. That's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> what is this? Glory! Yeah. What is your money to make it? What? I am telling her, get a book. She said, That's what I do. When I get a dream, I write it down. I have a book I write on my dream. All right, then. All right. Well, that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. And, and you draw what you see. Uh-huh. No, no, no. We got somebody. We got somebody who going to go to college quickly. Yes, yes. And then, uh, well, all the rest of you. I, I promise I will. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like a prophesy. Oh, I'm going to call on the phone and prophesy. She love I am the love. I love the prophecy over her. But you go, hold on to her. But yours prophecy is her prophecy. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. She will skip classes, skip some classes in university and college. She will have so much revelation and information. You start doing crazy stuff like this, tithing in your youth. God start giving you download. Give us supernatural downloads of um, supernatural information that is in the storehouse of heaven. Concerning technology, supernatural information concerning um um you have videotaped me. Yeah yeah yeah. It's a long time making the word and we kind of rusty. So Father, we thank you. Uh, somebody, somebody, somebody grab a phone. Everybody likes sleepy. Everything you all go right on time, twelve o'clock. It's twelve o'clock. But I'm prophesying until a uh, uh, one minute after. Look at look at here. Oh God. Things like this will mess up the prophet. Don't no, be prophesied over her. That she will skip classes. Yes. She will skip university classes. She will be a teacher of the professors. Yes, yes. She will tap into supernatural yeah, no. interve- in- innovation. She will tap into supernatural innovation and technology that are in scrolls and in the house, the technological house of heaven. She is going to tap into it. And she's going to bring it down to earth. And she's going to be a mover and shaker. We have, a, we have somebody um, in St. Thomas just like that too. The young lady. Yeah. yeah, we have somebody who works with IBM. Anybody know that young lady? What's her name? Oh, uh, yeah. Liz, Liz's sister. What cousin? Liz's daughter. Liz's daughter. Liz daughter. Rashid. 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 Uh, nobody read newspaper around here? We have a young lady just like that. Just don't know what to do because she's filled with technology and innovation. Go in IBM. And so Father, I thank you. And this all this information that she she will become a, a prophet, a prophetess in the marketplace also. She will prophesy to millionaires and the billionaires. Prophesy, listen, the people into technology, you know what they do? They go to a demon, de- demonic school to get some of these things. My God. But you're not going to demonic, demonic schools. No. Heavenly school. No wonder how come you get it? I got that too. But I went to another school. But yours will be perfect and you will know to do it. In Jesus' name. Somebody say? Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Good, good, go ahead. All right. I'm going to prophesy all day. I'm going to prophesy. Now, let's put your hands to the offering. Let's try, put your hands to the offering. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, let's prophesy. You will put your hands to the offering. Let your will be done, your kingdom come. Lord God, let everyone who gave today, let there be a press down. Come on, somebody say, let there be a what? A press down, shake it together and only your own. Let there be a kingdom flow to everyone. Anyone that's testing the tithe, let the, let the kingdom flow come back to them. Let a revolution happen to them in their lives, in the area of their money and their finances. To pay every bill. We take ourselves, as a matter of fact, as people of God, we take ourselves off of their talk 
The world they talk about inflation, deflation. We put ourselves on uh, the street yes, yes. where the goal is. Everybody where the what? Sanjo, we take ourselves, we are kingdom and strangers here, so we take ourselves off of the NBC, ABC, CNN talk. We put ourselves on Kingdom Gold Street. But in heaven, it is not bankrupt. And the word of God declares in Revelation that, is, that the, the streets are paved with gold. So we are not on Wall Street, we are on Heaven's Street Talk. Come on, let's just whisper and say, God, I am on Heaven's street talk. Every, my, every one of my investment will do good. When I invest in the kingdom, it will be bound back to be pressed on, shaking together, running over. And everybody shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Put your hands together. Amen. And celebrate. Put your hands together and celebrate. Amen. Thank you. Love and prayer. A blessing upon those who um, all those who watch today, who are blessed today. We, put, we pray a blessing upon all those who will share, share, share through a party and share this revelatory word about uh, the resurrected Lord and Savior and let their sons and daughters and family members and church members come back in love again with God yes, and yes. pursue God in Jesus. Everybody shout. Amen. 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 So we remain in church for the announcement and then we're going to do this.